As legislation to control the cat population enters the final stages in state parliament, those who care for thousands of dogs and cats in animal shelters and council pounds face a growing problem. There simply aren't enough homes for every abandoned animal and often euthanasia is the regrettable but necessary option. Now an increasing number of people are calling for that mindset to change. Claire Nichols has the story. <laughs> They say every dog has his day, and for this canine, it's turned out to be a lucky one. Argyle was found wandering the streets of Wanneroo a week ago. Now he's taking a ride to his new foster home. Nicole Taylor collects abandoned dogs from the pound almost every week. A member of the group Saving Animals from Euthanasia, she's part of a growing number of people embracing the no-kill movement, a belief that no healthy animal needs to be put down. One of the things we need to do is stop hiding behind this idea of animal overpopulation. Uh, it's not overpopulation if the pound is not advertising their animals. It's not overpopulation if a pound is not promoting their animals online or in the local paper. There you go, my boy. Doing While well. Argyle can look forward to a new home, many other dogs don't face such a happy ending. WA law requires council pounds to keep animals for just 72 hours before they can be put down. That's a fact that worries Michelle Williamson, an advocate of the no-kill movement and director of Pet Rescue, an organisation representing hundreds of animal welfare groups. People can see that there's some pounds that are having an awful lot of success and saving upwards of 90% of all the animals they take in and then other pounds, maybe their own local pound, are killing most of the pets that aren't claimed. <laughs> At the city of Gosnells, rangers including Sarah Wilkins bring in hundreds of dogs each year. Sometimes you do get surprised. Some of those well looked after pets don't get claimed. We don't know exactly why, um, but they are left with us. And, and they appear to be the sort of dog that you'd think the family would want back, but they're not claimed. Of the 865 dogs that were impounded at Gosnells last year, 142 were put down, usually because of illness or aggression. We do want to get as many to new homes as we can, but sometimes they have behavioural problems and it's, it's just an issue of safety at the end of the day, if, if they're safe to put back into the community or not. The City of Gosnells is one of several councils that work with rescue groups, ensuring most healthy animals are given a new home. I've been here for eight years and I've noticed every year it's getting better. They're able to take more and more dogs. But for every council that attempts to rehome abandoned dogs, there's another that doesn't. Councils are not required to reveal how many animals they put down each year. When 7.30 WA contacted the city of Armidale, for example, it was told the figures would not be released. Of even greater concern to welfare groups is the method of euthanasia some councils use. While most city pounds employ vets who give animals a lethal injection, many country pounds, including the shires of York and 2J, shoot animals that aren't reclaimed. Rural pounds do have unique challenges. However, um, we need to ask ourselves as a, as a community whether shooting companion animals is appropriate. <laughs> At the RSPCA, pet owners wanting to surrender their animals are put on a wait list until space opens up. The RSPCA will not put down an animal just to make space for another animal. So when our kennels are full, we put people on a waiting list. The association will, however, put down animals that are sick or have behavioural problems. In 2010, the RSPCA euthanised 233 dogs and 149 cats. We've noticed in recent weeks at the RSPCA our euthanasias have gone up because people have been surrendering animals that have serious health problems and serious behavioural problems because they wouldn't take responsibility for that animal. I know it's a hard thing to say, but they haven't decided to take it to the vet instead of dealing with it themselves, but they've tried to shove it onto the RSPCA to deal with it. 
At the state's main cat shelter, the euthanasia figures are far worse. They could be um, carrying FIV, which is uh, sort of AIDS in cats, and it's irresponsible to put an FIV positive cat out there. Age, uh, it could be uh, multiple cat households where cats, you know, there's 20, 30 cats in a house, and they have not been socialised properly. So there's, there's a number of factors why we put them to sleep. Of the more than 7,000 cats that arrived at Cat Haven last year, nearly 4,000 were put down. About half of those were kittens. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to put them to sleep for no other reason than there's just not enough room at the shelter. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's way too high. It's shocking. It's, it's an indictment on our community that we have that many cats come in every year. We save about half of them. Some months we have great months, we only euthanize 30 percent but it's still too many you know we don't like doing what we do but there's no one else out there to do it the cat haven puts its high euthanasia rates down to a couple of factors firstly this is the only open door shelter in wa meaning every animal no matter how sick or feral must be accepted Secondly, with no laws to force cat owners to sterilise their pets, the population just continues to grow. That, at least, is about to change. From November next year, new cat laws will start to be phased in, forcing owners to sterilise and microchip their pets. It's a move that's been welcomed by staff at the Cat Haven, who are busy sterilising hundreds of cats in a bid to keep the population at bay. They're less confident, however, about another law change, which will give council rangers the power to impound cats for the first time. I think one of our concerns is what will happen to the cats when they enter council pounds. Will they have a rehoming program or will they just euthanise the cats at the end of the whole period? Michelle Williamson says the new legislation just encourages more euthanasia and won't keep cat numbers down. And rather than rounding up all the cats and killing them, we need to be dissexing them and allowing them to maintain their areas. Uh, nature abhors a vacuum, so if you take all those cats away, they'll just be replaced with more cats who are undersexed. So the problem continues. Hello. Hey Baxter. Hello. Despite the statistics, advocates of the No Kill movement believe it can become a reality with the help of people like Nicole Taylor. The numbers show that it's possible and the community's enthusiasm for adoption show that it's possible. Look, I think they're not terribly pragmatic. Their hearts are in the right place. We have actually joined a, a movement called Getting to Zero Euthanasia, but as such, um, if, if there's homes out there, I would welcome them to come down and give us a hand to find those homes because we haven't been able to find them in 40 odd years. Rather than berating the public and saying you are all the problem, the No Kill movement says we can actually, as a community, fix this issue. We understand that people are passionate about their pets, so harnessing that passion brings about enormous change. Claire Nichols with that story.